Hey, I'm Reza Farheen. Thank you for clicking on this video. So, um, if you're into skincare, you've probably seen lots of reviews on The Ordinary or other Decium brands by um, other professionals, dermatologists, estheticians, um, other experts in the field. But uh, this video I wanted to make from the perspective of someone who's worked at Decium. A little bit more about my experience or background. I was a Decium employee for about two years and um, of course we learned every ingredient inside and out, how the skin works, how our products work on a person's skin, how it works in tandem with other brands and other ingredients. And I worked alongside um, estheticians, scientists, creators, dermatologists, uh, people going to school for biochemistry. So. Uh, I worked alongside people who actually really know what they're talking about and what they're doing. And of course, my coworkers and I would research um, ingredients and brands uh, for fun. So of course, working in the field, I've picked up a lot of knowledge, but of course, I don't claim to know more or as much as an actual professional. So please take their reviews and recommendations into consideration. They're just as important. A common... Um, concern among my customers was that uh, the Decium website is a little confusing, it's very wordy, it's very science forward, and that's it's true. Um, so when they would be home uh, researching what to buy and what to get for their skin concerns, or when they would come into the store, they would be very lost, very confused, uh, they wouldn't know where to begin. I hope uh, this video can help break down everything a little more. Uh, and the next time you walk into a Decium store or you go online, it is a little less confusing. I've had to explain these products and ingredients uh, multiple times a day, every day for two years. And um, a majority of the products like my team and I have used. This is just a video to kind of tell you uh, what to buy, what not to buy from Decium. And uh, if there are any products that people are using wrong, etc. Of course, uh, please do your own research and again, uh, always listen to professionals and if you have actual medical concerns, please again consult a professional. In this video, I'm going to, I guess, do a part one of just the ordinary products and then in a separate video, I'm going to break down Hyalamide and Neod, which are Decium's two other skincare brands, which um, aren't as talked about as much as the ordinary uh, because again of how popular the ordinary has become so uh just for time this is going to be a part one and then hilo and nia would be a part two so um trying to figure out which product to start with i guess i'm just going to go in the order of the way my the store that i worked at was set up so the first section would be um our anti-aging section so peptides such as and i'm going to list like all the names here somewhere i don't know i'm filming on my iphone in my attic I don't have the best technology, please cut me some slack. <laughs> so um, I'm going to list the names. Uh, and the anti-agers we had were um, basically a whole bunch of peptide formulations. So Buffet, Argillarine, Argillarine, I don't know how you say it, which I have here, um, and Matrixyl. No, Matrixyl and Buffet with Copper. So peptides help with collagen production, collagen stimulation, really good anti-ager that... Um, anybody could use they're not intense they're not um irritating so uh buffet is uh the ordinary's most one of the most popular products it is in combination of matrixyl argillarine and hyaluronic acid uh, it's a really good serum my team and i really liked it it was uh it had a very nice gel texture to it it wasn't heavy it wasn't sticky uh good for day and night um what else yeah, it was a really good anti-ager. There's something um, else to say about it. Uh, Buffet also played well with other ingredients, except for vitamin C. Um, that was something, uh, vitamin C and peptides weren't something that we recommended mixing. Um, there's something wrong if you do. Uh, your skin's not going to be like, irritated or uh, become like sensitized or anything. Um, but we didn't recommend combining peptides and vitamin C together only because... Uh, it would just kind of lessen the effects of the vitamin C and you don't want that. You want to get your money's worth out of every product you use. So if you wanted to um, 
use vitamin C and peptides together, we would recommend vitamin C in the morning and then your peptides sick at night or vice versa, but vitamin C is more effective during the daytime. But other than that, Buffy is a good um, starter anti-aging serum. If you're like, I don't know, in your early 20s and like you want to be a little more preventative about your aging or you're starting to see fine lines and wrinkles, yeah, it was a good place to start. For the two other peptides we have, we have Matrixol and Argilarine, which are both in Buffet. Um, we also sell them separately. Um, Matrixol is a very common peptide used in a lot of anti-aging serums on the market. Matrixol 3000, um, that's like the other name for it. Uh, again, yeah, aside from Buffet, if you wanted to use um, the peptide on its own, the Matrixol on its own, that was great as well. Performed as well as the Buffet. Again, just very simple anti-ager for day and night. There, there really isn't much to say about it. We all uh, liked it. It felt really nice on the really? skin. This one right here. Um, this uh, performs a little differently than Matrixel. Uh, this is also known as Botox in a bottle because um, it mimics the tightening effects of Botox. Um, this one is a little more short term compared to Matrixel and Buffet. Uh, on its own is good for like is good for the daytime or is good um before like going out or something Lorene on its own is really good for dynamic wrinkles so the ones you get like on your forehead or around your eyes or around your mouth when you're making expressions facial expressions which is why people get botox to kind of you know reduce the looks of like your laugh lines or like your forehead lines the 11s crow's feet etc um yeah, argillarine um, kind of temporarily like freezes those muscles the same way Botox does. and But it is very temporary. It's not like long-lasting freezing or anti-aging the way Matrixel, um is, right? And um, I will say that the, the freezing action works. Um, I used argillarine all over my forehead once. I don't know why I just wanted to try it out. Um, and I sneezed. And my forehead was so tight when, you know when you sneeze and your forehead kind of like crinkles a little bit? It hurt when I sneezed because my forehead was so tight and like frozen. So it, it works if you want like a short-term quick fix for your uh, dynamic wrinkles or facial expressions. Again, for the day or before going out, a jewelry is good, but just don't depend on it for like a long-term collagen production or long-term anti-aging the way Matrixel or like Buffet, which has Matrixel in it, would do. Other anti-aging peptide we have is buffet plus copper so um copper we sell separately like as its own ingredient in our neod line which i will get to uh in the other video and and uh that product is expensive it is 90 dollars, and it's, it's an amazing ingredient it's an amazing product again i'll get to that um but it is expensive not everybody wants to spend not everybody can spend 90 dollars on a serum nor do they want to Buffet plus copper was created to make copper more accessible for our customers and it's a great idea um, and so it is basically regular buffet which is hyaluronic argillarine and matrixel plus copper um this one we kind of have like mixed reviews on amongst the staff uh it kind of made us break out for some reason we don't know why uh it just kind of gave us like little bumps all over our faces um, regular buffet is fine for us. Again, we've had no problems with that. Neot copper is fine for us. No problems there. But for some reason, this combination of buffet and copper in this uh, particular formulation just uh, wasn't it. We did not enjoy this. We don't really recommend it. There are customers that do like it and have no issues. Um, again, it is subjective. What works for me may not work for you and vice versa. But um, it's not something we recommended. The Hylamide brand has a serum similar to Buffet and Copper, which I will get to in the other video, that we recommended over Buffet the Copper. So the next products are, I'm thinking, it would be Niacinamide, the Caffeine Serum, and Alpha Arbison. So Niacinamide, which is also known as Vitamin B, um, helps with brightening, which is the way I like to use it. Um, oil control and like minimizing the appearance of pores, temporarily at least. And it's also uh, pretty soothing and like anti-inflammatory. Ordinary is niacinamide. Uh, one of those really hit or miss products is one of our most popular products, but um, the ordinary specific formulation, uh, we weren't the biggest fans of. It's 
incredibly hit or miss which in a way i guess all skincare is hit or miss again what works for me may not work for you vice versa but this one was really one of those um polarizing products like for some for most of us it did absolutely nothing and then for but for a lot of my customers it was the best thing since sliced bread so i feel like there are better nice in my formulations out there especially in k-beauty they have uh one of the best for sure uh the next product is our caffeine solution so caffeine is a diuretic which means uh getting rid of water and water retention which is why you have to pee all the time when you drink coffee or green tea and um this is what helps with puffiness under the eyes just to kind of get rid of all uh that fluid buildup and water retention under the eyes. Caffeine solution for the eyes is a great quick fix for puffiness, but it won't do anything for uh, aging or dark circles the way a regular anti-aging eye serum would. And um, I think that's one of, this is one of the most commonly misused products. People buy caffeine because it's a giant bottle. It's, I don't have it, but this, it's this size, it's 30 ml. Um, and it's six dollars so obviously a six dollar eye serum sounds amazing compared to sixty dollar eye serums but um the caffeine solution is not a regular daily eye serum it is just a quick fix for puffiness under the eyes if you don't have puffy eyes it's not going to do anything for you except dry your under eyes out more actually i, I don't have like a puffy eye issue but i tried out caffeine anyway just to again see um as an employee just how it worked um, it actually like gave me crow's feet. That's how like drying it is. So again, if you don't have puffiness, it will do absolutely nothing for you. People who had puffy under eyes, especially like in the morning, for example, who did buy it, uh, we always kind of warn warned them that it may be a little drying. So either put like a lightweight moisturizer on top or uh, layer your caffeine with another eye serum. So um, caffeine is great. It really does work. But again, only if you have puffiness, if you're looking for if you're looking to target dark circles or wrinkles, uh, that our caffeine solution won't help with that. Even though it says dark circles on the label, um, it, it's, it's not real. <laughs> Don't listen to it. Dark circles, you can't really treat anyway, but that's another matter. And the final product from that section is, what was it? Alpha Arbutin. Uh, Alpha Arbutin is great for dark spots. Um, I've used it mainly in like Korean products again. Um, again, similar to the niacinamide, I don't know how we feel about the Ordinaries formulation. Again, it just wasn't our favorite. Um, of course, in general, dark spot products, you ha it takes months to get rid of dark spots and to um, brighten and even out skin, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, whatever it is, it takes a long time to get rid of. Uh, but Alpha Arbutins, it just we didn't really see the results from it um the neod brand has a good dark spot corrector which i'll get to um but alpha arbitans wasn't it wasn't it for us we didn't really like it okay, so the next section in the ordinary is hydrators and oils so for hydrators we have let's see hyaluronic acid marine hyaluronics and um our moisturizer the nmf which i don't have here no i don't have so our NMF moisturizer, and we have oils for moisturizing. So for oils, we have Argan, I have Hemisqualane, and we have Squalane. So um, let's start off with the hydrators. So hyaluronic acid and marine hyaluronics are hyaluronic acid. This one here, one of our most popular products. Um, yeah, we don't like it. <laughs> hyaluronic acid is a great ingredient, but not the ordinary formulation of it. Um, I guess if you read the reviews, you'll see that it is very heavy, very goopy, very sticky. It is a gel consistency and it looks great in the bottle. Um, let me show you. Once you kind of, um, can you see how sticky it is? Yeah, it's like that on your face. It's a little worse on your face, actually. You won't really feel it much on your hand, but once it's on your face, it's very sticky. It doesn't really sink in nicely. Um, other products you put on top do kind of pill up and it gets a little disgusting so we don't recommend the ordinary's hyaluronic um, everyone that i work with at my store except for one had curly hair we use this in our hair actually um great for curl formation not great for hydration on the skin so marine hyaluronics was created in response to um the reviews of the original hyaluronic acid 
marine hyaluronics I don't have with me, but um, it is super duper watery thin. Um, sinks in beautifully into the skin. Again, not heavy, not sticky. It is so thin and lightweight. And it just feels so much better on your skin, on your face when you apply it. And um, everything you, everything else you put on top just sinks in nice. It doesn't pill. It doesn't ball up. It doesn't feel like it's not being absorbed or sunken. It's great. The downside of it is that it kind of does smell like the sea a little bit. So when Marine Hyaluronics is, it's not actual hyaluronic acid like this or the other serums the other brands have it is a marine derived water reservoir so it is an ingredient that mimics hyaluronic acid it's derived from red and green algae um, which aids in hydration much like hyaluronic acid does so we definitely recommend marine hyaluronics over the original hyaluronic acid if you want to stay in the ordinary um, one other thing I have to say about hyaluronic acid is be careful about using it if you live in a dry climate. Um, I mentioned before that hyaluronic acid pulls water from the environment into your skin. If you don't have any water in your environment, if it's not humid, it may actually do the reverse and dry out your skin. So be careful about using hyaluronic if you are living in a non-humid climate. Um, I'm in New York. New York is super humid during the summertime, so I have no problem using hyaluronic right now um, to kind of keep myself hydrated. But for anybody else who lives in a drier climate, like for example, uh, we had customers from like Arizona who had a hard time using hyaluronic because it would end up drying out their skin because it's not pulling any moisture from the air to help them. And their skin would be like, really, like itchy or irritated. So we wouldn't recommend hyaluronic for people like them. We had other forms of hydrating serums that we would offer them. So next up is our natural moisturizing factors. This is our simple daily moisturizer. It's oil-free, it's lightweight, um, has like a very nice whip texture to it. So natural moisturizing factors or NMF is already naturally found in our skin on our skin's barrier. So what this moisturizer does is help replenish um, and restore any NMF that we're losing. It's not a bad moisturizer. I liked it. Um, it's not something I currently use because I like the feeling of my personal moisturizer better than the um the ordinaries um we all use it as a hand cream <laughs> as opposed to a facial moisturizer but it is a good moisturizer for only what seven bucks i like the feeling of nmf but i prefer gel textures in my moisturizer but that's just a personal preference um it's a fine moisturizer it's very simple very lightweight um great for daily use it just has amino acids and hyaluronic acid in it for um, moisture. It's a really good product. And in that section, we have a whole bunch of oils. We have, if I can remember them, squalane, argan, marula, um, chia seed, barrage, uh, sea buckthorn. I'm sure we have others. I, I really can't remember them. <laughs> so our oils and oils in general are just for moisturizing the way our NMF cream moisturizer is used for moisturizing. Um, I feel like a lot of people get hydration and moisture confused. Hydration, like your hyaluronic acid, refers to the water content in your skin. And then moisture, um, like your cream moisturizer or an oil, refers to the oil content on the surface of your skin. Hydration and moisture work in tandem. You, you can't really have one without the other you you just can't put a hyaluronic acid on your face and call it a day hyaluronic on its own is not a moisturizer it is your hydrator um it's a humectant it draws water into your skin and then you have to seal that water you have to seal that moisture with a moisturizer so you could use either a cream for that or an oil i feel like a lot of brands on the market market their oils as serums or um hydrators which they're not they're not hydrators or moisturizers um, our oils aren't like that. Our oils are just simply oils for moisturizing for the surface of your skin. Um, a lot of oils like our rosehip oil or marula do have like properties, like anti-aging properties. Um, like rosehip has like this natural form of vitamin A in it and marula has like a natural form of vitamin C in it that may offer a little bit of brightening, a little bit of anti-aging, but not at the same level as an actual anti-aging serum are the same level as an actual vitamin c so you just can't put marula oil on your face every morning and think it's going to protect you or brighten up your skin the same way a vitamin c would 
um, our oils just aren't like that. The only way that would be effective is if the mula had like actual vitamin C added into it or had like an actual like active ingredient added into it. People assume that our oils are like serum suspended in oils, which is how a lot of brands um, formulate their serums. They do a suspended in oil because an oil feels so lovely on your skin, right? So um, our oils um, aren't like that. They're just simple moisturizers. It's just 100% cold pressed oil. It's a single ingredient oil. So the way I would recommend oils to a person, um, I, I really do it depending on your skin type. Typically um, for oily skin, I would recommend the squalane or the hemi squalane. Not this one. This one? The squalane or the hemi squalane. Um, squalane is not to be confused not to be confused with squalene with an e before the end. Squalene is derived from like shark liver or something. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, we don't use squalene. I don't know any brand that uses squalene. Squalane, however, is derived from sugarcane or olives, and it's also naturally found in our skin. It's not. It's technically not even an oil. It's like a biolipid. Um, yeah, this is the oil I would recommend if you have oily and or acne prone skin. It is super duper lightweight. Hope you could see it. Yeah, it's, it's really lightweight. Doesn't clog up your pores or anything. If you have drier skin, this may not be enough for moisture. Um, if you have drier skin, I would definitely recommend maybe like the marula or the rose hip, for example. So the next section we have are our AHAs, BHAs, our chemical our chemical exfoliants, our direct acids. So we have lactic acid, 5% and 10%. Oops. Mandelic, 10%. Our glycolic acid, 7%. And the AHA, BHA mask. So um, the first AHA, mandelic acid, or the 10%, that is our gentlest AHA because it has really large molecules which don't penetrate the skin as easily. So um, it's good for those with sensitive skin or uh, those who are new to AHAs. Um, AHAs meaning alpha hydroxy acids. These are chemical exfoliants for the surface. Yeah, mandelic is a good place to start for if you're sensitive or new to AHAs and you want to kind of start off slowly or lightly. Um, no irritation, no sensitivity, no redness. Uh, it, it's a good product. All of our AHAs are, actually. I'll get to that. Level up from that would be our lactic acid. We have a 5% formula and a 10%. Um, lactic acid is pretty, it's like standard AHA, you find it in most um, chemical exfoliation products on the market. Same as I think mandelic acid does, just kind of eats away um, the dead skin cells on the surface of your skin. And then one step above lactic acid would be the glycolic acid. Um, this is commonly misused because of, the, because of the fact that it says toning solution, not a daytime, nighttime toner not for daily use. Um, all of our AHAs are meant to be used one to two times a week at night. Uh, right after cleansing, you put a couple of drops into your hands or onto a cotton pad, put it on your skin, and then you leave it on. You don't wash them off. Leave it on, then you would follow up with like a lot of hydrating products and a, a good moisturizer. I hate that it says toner because then people are exfoliating day and night because they're using this as a regular toner. Um, the instructions say use every night, which you don't want to exfoliate every night either. That's just overkill for your skin. Um, all exfoliation should just be one to two times a week at night. Um, glycolic acid is it's not even a regular toner with like a little bit of glycolic in it. This is just straight up glycolic acid. And if you're using it day and night every day, or at least every night daily, you're just tearing your skin up. So don't do that. I'm telling you that this is not a regular um, daily toner. We have those in the Hylomide brand. Any toner from any brand really works for daily uses. Don't mix the AHAs with uh, vitamin C or retinol. So if you're someone who uses retinol in your routine, uh, keep them separate. So you would do like, your AHA one night and then like your retinol like two, two, three days later, for example. Next up is our AHA BHA mask, uh, one of our most popular products. Um, it's, it's labeled um, AHA BHA peel. Um, it's not really a peel that you would get at like 
the doctor's office um is really just an exfoliating mask it's 30 percent acid so it is our strongest um aha solution for a beginner don't start off with a mask right away it's going to be a lot start off with the mandelic or lactic acid and then work your way up in strength uh the way you would use the aha bha peel is um wash your face dry your face take a couple of drops as you take like half the pipette uh, spread it around your face like a mask leave it on for about five to ten minutes wash it off and then continue on with the rest of your routine again no active ingredients like vitamin c or retinol in the same night it doesn't perform at the same level as a professional peel or is it one of those tca or jessner's peels where you keep layering on product until your skin starts to like frost and peel and flake it's not like that at all it's just a regular exfoliating mask and again it's one of our strongest ones so don't use if you're a beginner all of our ahas are amazing um is one of the top things i recommend from the ordinary or we all recommend um just be careful to go in order or use the one that's appropriate for your skin type or levels of sensitivity again my delicates are gentlest um then lactic then glycolic then uh the aha bha mask um, a lot of people get ambitious and go straight for the, the red blood mask because they see um, bloggers using it or people raving about it online bloggers don't mention that this is the strongest um one out of all the ahas and people end up like burning their skin because their their skin just wasn't ready for ahas yet or they're really sensitive and they just kind of go for it <laughs> so um amazing amazing product product just keep your sensitivity levels in mind when shopping for our ahas that's all uh, next we have azelaic acid and salicylic acid salicylic is your standard bha for pimples and blackheads um bha better beta hydroxy acid um ahas are for the surface bha's um, go a little deeper into your pores so that's why it's great for blackheads um salicylic is great nothing to say about salicylic it's i'm sure it's a product that most of us have used in the past in some way or form um i know it's currently being re reformulated right now one is coming back i don't know um i guess you would just have to look on instagram for updates on when it's coming back because there were a lot of people that kind of mentioned um being irritated from it even though it's just a 2% and 2% is pretty standard for salicylic acid, but people were irritated from it. So I think they're making other formulations and different strengths to suit people who may be a little sensitive to our salicylic. This one is azelaic acid. This is good for redness. This is good for um, acne. Uh, we also recommend it to people who had um, like really big red dark spots. Typically those who are lighter in skin tone their red um sorry their dark spots were more red and if you were like medium to dark your dark spots are typically more brown or purple or black even um azelaic we really recommend it for any sort of redness um our azelaic was fine i've personally never used it. i never really had a use for it but others who used it they liked it a lot of my coworkers preferred the flawless choice azelaic over um the ordinary is as a leg but again try it out for yourself it is a good product it's formulated just fine <laughs> this is a really awkward way to end a video but um i know i said the ordinary would be part one and then part two would be high the mind and neon but while i was editing the this video it ended up being like 53 minutes long which is really long for youtube and really long for people to watch i know people don't want to sit and watch something like this for an hour so i think i will split up the ordinary into two parts make this video part one and then part two would be the ordinary as well just the second half and then part three or three and four depending on how long that video is will be hylamide and neon so thanks for watching the ordinary part one and i'll see you uh in the ordinary part two